Hi everyone, I am Jerry Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and it's a quick genealogy tip. On today's quick genealogy tip, we will be discussing the genealogical proof standard, which is a system to measure the plausibility of a genealogical conclusion. Another way to think of it is it's the standard of which to judge the proof of your genealogical conclusion. There are five main points to the genealogical proof standard, and they're all pretty straightforward. The first is that you have reasonably exhaustive research. So basically, you have looked in all of the possible places that could have some sort of documentation or record that relates to the genealogical question that you have. Basically, it's saying that if you haven't explored every possible avenue, then you really can't come to a genealogical conclusion yet. The second is complete and accurate source citations. The main ideas to this being that you are showing where you're getting your information from and where your sources are coming from, but also making it so that if somebody else is going to redo the research you did, or you're going to recheck your own research, that you should be able to easily locate the sources that you used to prove whatever conclusions you came up with. When it comes to giving accurate source citations, the standard in the genealogy field usually goes by evidence explained by Elizabeth Schoen Mills. This book gives the standard on how to cite sources from all different places, going from different types of books or repositories to even how to cite sources with websites. It's constantly being revised. The one I have is the third edition. And you can see that there's all of these tabs at the top. And almost everybody that I've ever seen who has this book has a similar system where they're marking the most used pages to help them in citing their sources. So I highly recommend if you're trying to become a really good genealogist or if you're really trying to become a professional genealogist, you need to get this book, which I will actually be linking down below in the description. The third point of the genealogical proof standard is to test your evidence through analysis and correlation. You want to analyze these documents, look at every little bit of it, understand the history behind the documents, the context, who wrote the documents, who, where is this information coming from, how trustworthy is it. As well, you want to correlate it with other documents, and this goes back to that first point of exhaustive research you want to make sure that you find other documents that are matching up in some sort of way. If you want to prove someone is the same person and you can find two different signatures, that's a matter of correlation. If you want to prove somebody is the same person through an address, that's another way to correlate. So by correlating your different sources, you're helping strengthen your proof behind whatever conclusion you come to. Another great way to think of this is not just to work to prove your hypothesis, you want to actively try to disprove it because that's the best way to find the holes in your argument. The fourth point of the genealogical proof standard is resolution of conflicting evidence. It's very common for people to find different pieces of information in different documents for the same person. A very common one is with birthdays and ages, especially because for many, many centuries, birth dates weren't really well recorded. And also when people were immigrating from different cultures, if they were using different calendars, the translation of one date to another may not always match up. A common one being Hebrew birth dates versus dates from the Gregorian calendar. But when you find these pieces of conflicting evidence, you need to resolve the problem. You need to figure out why are they conflicting. It sometimes can be the context behind a document, such as in census records, if the neighbor is giving the ages, they may just know a general age. So your ancestor may be 43, but their neighbor thought they were 39. So you're going to have a conflicting piece of evidence with everything else. And the last point of the genealogical proof standard is a well-reasoned conclusion. You need to be able to explain how you're coming to that conclusion using the evidence that you have available. It needs to be a coherent conclusion, something that someone will be able to understand, and something that makes sense. Now, for anyone who's interested in becoming a professional genealogist or really stepping up their genealogy game, 
I highly suggest going beyond just the genealogical proof standard and looking at the Board for Certification of Genealogists standards for genealogy. These are a set of standards that cover all sorts of parts of the genealogy field. That includes documenting, researching, writing, and continuing education. These standards are really useful in giving ideas on how to better your own research, as well as strengthen your arguments and strengthen your writing. You can learn all about these genealogy standards by getting the genealogy standards book from the Board for Certification of Genealogists. You can actually get it on Amazon, which I'll be linking down below in the description. And I highly suggest it for anyone who really wants to become a professional or anyone who just really wants to step up their genealogy game. Thank you so much for checking out this quick genealogy tip. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It's completely free to do so. And tell me down in the comments what did you think of the video and what kind of videos would you want me to do. If you want to follow me, you can go to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. I'll see you in my next video.